all that good stuff, but I'm going to read a passage, a passage out of the Bible in John 6, uh, where I found the best part, I think I should talk about the Eucharist. Uh, John 6, sorry, 51. It says, I am the bread of life which came down from heaven. If anyone eats this bread, he will live forever, and the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? The Jews said to them, Surely, truly, I say to you, unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. Now, obviously, we can say that the, not just the uh, Pharisees didn't believe him. They were just like, well, how can this guy give us his flesh and blood to drink? You know, but it, it all depends on how you look at it. And Jesus obviously was taken in a different way, and the Jews didn't, or the Pharisees didn't. You know, they took it away, and I'll explain how they uh, took it. <coughs> uh, basically, they were taking the phrase, eat my you know, Jesus, whenever Jesus said, eat my flesh and drink my blood, they're obviously taking it figuratively. And it says in the Bible, when you take it like that, I found a part, uh, I don't know if it was in the Old Testament, but I found a thing on the internet that if you take it figuratively, this is what it would mean. Uh, to eat someone's, someone's, someone's flesh was to actually to persecute someone, to bitterly hate someone. If then the word of Jesus are to be taken figuratively, it would appear that Christ had promised to his enemies eternal life and uh, glorious resurrection and recompense for the persecutions against him. And uh, that was the thing, like, not just, you know, take my, uh, eat my flesh, you know, the thing for, you know, the uh, thing with whatever he said, uh, this is my blood. And the same thing. And, <coughs> So basically you can, basically what he's saying, he's like, eat my flesh and drink my blood now. Whenever he said that he actually meant to eat it, you know, he, we're actually supposed to eat his flesh and drink his blood, but, you know, I'll explain that, uh, what he meant by that. Uh, the Eucharist is a sacrament and a sacrifice. Okay, I was going to explain to Jacob what a sacrament was, and this sacrament is actually the only one where Jesus is personal in it. You can actually receive Jesus Christ. That's why it's like the greatest one. You know, that's, that's why he gave it to us. And it's, you know, it's really cool that we actually get to receive Jesus. You know, it's like the coolest sacrament ever, you know. You know, it's really cool. Uh, it is where, you know, uh, even in the appearances of bread and wine where he's contained, offered, and received in the, in the Eucharist. Uh, where Christ instituted the Eucharist was obviously on the Last Supper. Now, whenever he was doing that, the Jews were also having their, you know, uh, Paschal, their sacrifice of a lamb, you know, what, like they did uh, in Egypt until, you know, the present day. <coughs> and then, you know, they were having their own sacrifice by a priest, you know, they were sacrificing the lamb, and so it was Jesus, he was the lamb, and was being sacrificed. And it was to fall up on the next day on Calvary. Is, you know, was to be continued until now. Uh, <clears throat> and when the Eucharist is, is instituted, is when, you know, he said, take and eat, this is my body, and take and eat, this is my blood, take and drink, this is my blood. And that's when it's changed, it's the same with the priest today, that's when it's changed uh, into his body and blood, and the only thing that's left is just the appearances of bread and wine you know, transubstantiation. Uh, let's see. And Christ, at the Last Supper, gave it, gave the apostles, you know, the power to do this, whenever he said, do this in remembrance of me. And that is carried out to the priests until now. So that's one thing. You know, that's cool that the Mass has kept going until now. And we can, you know, prove it all the way back until then. Uh, Three reasons why 
we have the Eucharist is uh, why Christ gave it to us is it's going to be offered as a sacrifice, renewing the sacrifice of the cross. So uh, to be offered as a sac uh, to be received by the faithful in holy communion with do and to remain ever on uh, the altar as a proof for so he can show his love for us and in adoration. You know, that's, it's a cool thing to go to adoration when, you know, Jesus is really present there. I mean, you know, he's present every, you know, everywhere, but it's, mm. it's really cool when we go to adoration. And, I don't know if that was, and I watch, uh, but I'm going to read off some really cool music, because I was reading that, I was actually reading this book, you know, for the first time my mama found it and was telling me about it. I think she's read it, but there's so many miracles in here that are really cool. And I'll just pick like a couple of them, but there's really cool miracles on here. And I know I've known a some of them, and you know a lot of them are really well known. But I'll tell you a couple of them. This one is in uh, Florence, Italy, in the Church of San Ambrosio, <laughs> yeah, located in the center of Florence. Uh, one morning after celebrating Holy Mass, uh, the priest, absent mindedly, neglected to wipe the chalice dry leaving a small amount of consecrated wine in the bottom of the golden vessel. The next morning, when he was preparing for the celebration of another holy mass, he was astonished to find at the bottom of the chalice a quantity of co coagulated blood. After 750 years, this blood is still perfectly preserved. In the church of San Ambrosio, when the miracle is kept, the walls have been decorated by Cosimo Rosselli with paintings that portray a procession with a miraculous Eucharist blood. Uh, through the streets of Florence. I want to say he was with a pestilence and had a plague or whatever going on. So I think it, that's, I think it cured a, a lot of people there. And another one was in uh, Regensburg, Germany. Let's see if I can find a good part in here. Uh, I'll just tell you this. Uh, uh, it's kind of like the same thing. There was a priest who was, he was in the middle of consecration, and he, you know, doubted that that was the real, that Jesus was actually present, and it was the, you know, he was, it was his real body and blood. And immediately, you know, it was, uh, it was when the, you know, way back then, you know, the altar was faced you know, the other way, and uh, the, the corpus actually uh, came down and took the chalice from the priest, and waited until you know, the priest actually said and he believed in everything and then the uh, corpus gave it back to him. I thought that was <laughs> really cool. Definitely. But uh yeah, I can keep going on with these miracles, but yeah, I was gonna I was hoping uh Jacob yeah, yeah. could have been here so I think I've reading up you know, a little bit more of him and stuff, but